Did you know that studies have shown that crafting helps relieve stress and anxiety and those of us with chronic pains, it actually helps? Today's video was inspired by wanting Ukrainians to stay home with me and let's craft together, whether it be from boredom or wanting to gain a new skill. I promise you this hobby of learning to use Palmer clay is absolutely rewarding. So why not give it a try? We are going old school, baby, but with better sense of humor. Actually, scratch that. I can't promise the better sense of humor. Hey Grains, today we're going to learn how to make mythological creatures with clay that seem expert level, but I promise you, anyone can do it as long as you have patience. So I'm gonna teach you something that I'm not qualified to do, because my degrees are in anthropology and literature. Don't ask me how I got here. I just did. So in order to show you that anyone can do these, in addition to clay, because many of you have said that you've started to take on clay as a hobby, and paint, because most crafters have that, I will not be using any tools whatsoever. So this crafting video is going to be a craft challenge in which I will not be using any tools except... Yep, toothpicks. So you can see that we're in this together. And if you don't have toothpicks, then you could use your fingers, you'll be fine. So today I will be teaching you how to make your very own dragon and a unicorn and maybe a bonus creature, we'll see. I don't usually do tutorials on my channel anymore, but if your grains like it, I could do more. But otherwise, this is just a one-time thing because it was recommended and my friend Mariah Elizabeth said that it would be, would be fun. So, and I was like, yeah, actually that, that would be fun. So thank you, Mariah, for the suggestion. By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, otherwise I will wave a shock point thing at you. Wait, does this count as a tool? Make sure you click all notifications. I think it's safe to say that we can use a cutter, but if you don't want to use a cutter, you could still use your toothpick to cut down with. There, complete. Now before we start, I want to be very clear for those of you who want to say, But Jakey, you're just copying other artists that make dragons. Stop! No, 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 no! That is not the case. So I will go ahead and let you grains know. Some of my favorite accounts that make dragons include Dragons and Beasties, who has a very particular, absolutely adorable style, and I love her take on different breeds, and Bella Enchanted Studios, who makes everything from a watermelon looking dragon to rainbows to snake looking to desserty snakes, is what I'm trying to say. And as you can see, the most common factor is dragons. So because we're working with a specific breed of creature, there are similarities. The little head that's kind of like a teardrop, the body that's shaped like a carrot, and so on and so forth. So because we're working with the same breeds, yeah, definitely there's going to be resemblance. And so I highly encourage you to check the description box below to check out their links and 100% get inspired by the different themes that they do present. The brand of clay that I use is actually called Sculpey. And Sculpey comes in three main branches. Sculpey 3, which is the softest and my most preferred. Sculpey Primo, which has pretty colors, but it hardens a little too quickly, so it's kind of hard on the hands. And Sculpey Souffle, which is very light when baked. But same thing as Primo, it does harden too quickly. So these for me is eh. I really want to make a rainbow dragon. So for the body, I'm going to go with a really dark blue. So I'm going to be taking half a block of clay and mixing just about one strip of black. Let's mix it up. This is not fully mixed, but here's another bit of advice. If you like swirly swirlies, only mix it halfway and you'll get a really cool effect. But I want it all the way, so. There we go. That is a really pretty deep blue. Now when it comes to a dragon head, the most basic shape is a kind of teardrop. But there are also two kinds of mounts, generally speaking. There's a normal mouth where the lower part is pushed down. As you can see, the simplest way to make one of these, if you don't have tools like I do, is to use the back part of any spoon or fork and just push it lower. The other kind of dragon that I absolutely love is the ones with the underbite, like, I, I'm trying, like, like, like that. <laughs> the ones with underbites are pretty much similar to the ones with the lower part pushed down, except we're going to push on the top part instead. So you're doing a kind of reverse mouth. So you just have to find the style that you want and go with that. But for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to continue with the lower part of the mouth pushed down. Aww. Now, in order to give our dragon a little bit more dimension, because the heads aren't flat, they're not like... What? 
We need to create indents right in between where the eyes are and right in between where the nose is. For that, I simply just use my fingers and just, you see, just right in between, right there. And if you feel like it's too flat, go ahead and take some little pieces of clay and put them right around where the eyes would go to make them pop out a little more. Same thing with the nose if needed. One of the things I don't show on camera much is the fact that I spend so much time smoothing pieces together. You see, this piece of clay here is not smooth. You can see the difference between the new piece of clay and the old piece of clay. So I spend a lot of time using my fingers, just smoothing them together. Take your time. Now, one of my favorite parts is making the eyes. There are so many different options. You can make them super cute. You can make them evil and just so crazy evil. Or you could just find your own style and maybe even make like cycloptic one-eyed dragon. That's up to you. There are so many options. And even though my favorite method is using half dome cabochons, as you've seen in many of my past videos, where I pretty much paint them and then put them onto the sculpture, depending on how I feel the mood of the sculpture should be, I promised I would show you how to make things only with clay and household things. So for that, I'm going to be making an emerald colored eye by mixing green and translucent clay. You can also mix white. Once I mix these, I'm going to make a kind of circle, cut it in half, and then make sure that they are dome shaped so that they're the eye size that I want. Always use your dragon head as a reference to make sure that it is the size that you want. Now here's the trick. Once it's baked, we're going to go ahead and push it into the head. It depends how you want it. If you want it cuter and baby-ish looking, you'll bring it closer to the nostril, but if you want it more evil looking, then you'll bring it further up. Now for this next part, it's going to depend a lot on what personality you want your dragon to have. And for my purpose, I want it to have a kind of devious but cute look at the same time. So I will be adding extra clay around the eyes to make it a little softer and less snake-like. And I like snakes with some kind of cheek, so I'll make little rounds of flat clay and put them sides on the sides of the map. The sides of the face! English! Please, I want cheeks on my dragon. And once you have the shape of the face, it's looking more cute because it's your style. No matter what style you want it to be, it's cute. Now we're going to set the head aside and work on the body. Trust me, we're going to be adding way more detail to the dragon's head, but first, the body. For that, we're going to start with a rounded ball of clay, and then we're going to make a carrot, but on both ends. So it's kind of slimmer on both sides as opposed to just one side, where one of them is going to be the tail, and the other side is going to be the neck. For the back legs, we're going to take a round ball of clay, put it in the back, and only smooth the back part, not the front part, because we want the definition to show. And then you're going to take another teardrop shape of clay, take your toothpick, and make the indents for where the toes would go. Remember, as you progress, you can definitely add more detail. I'm just showing you the basics, and this dragon exists in your imagination, so there's no wrong answer. For the front paws, we're going to make an udon shape, which is just pretty much a noodle, and then lightly flatten the front part, which is going to be the paws. Place it in the front, and again, take your toothpick and make the little beans, the little toesies. If there's one thing I can tell you grains right now is don't worry too much about all the fingerprints and all that. There's easy ways to get rid of them. Just for now, put your pieces in. Put all your shapes in. And now for my favorite part, magic. How did these sprinkles happen? Don't ask. When it comes to cleaning up your piece, there are two, three main ways. The first one is you gotta keep smoothing. A small project like this could take anywhere between two and three hours. So don't let the magic of editing fool you. So number one, Smooth, smooth, smooth. Number two and three, rubbing alcohol or nail polish remover. So what you do is you take a Q-tip and you put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it and you rub it on your piece. What that's going to do essentially is slightly melt the clay, which is going to make it smoother and blend the pieces that were sticking out too much. In this case, I'm not doing the whole dragon. I'm just doing part that I want it to be smooth since I'm adding extra pieces right on top. 
dragon wings. There are so many different ones. There's the itty bitty ones. There's the uh, wyver ones, which are huge and bulky, because that's their main arm. And then again, like dragons and beasties, she does feathered wings, she does cutesy wings, she does all sorts of wings. For this purpose, since I've done so many different types on my channel as well, including ones with claws right on the tips, for this little one, we're going to make wings that are tucked in. If you want to see how to make bigger wings that are actually open, feel free to check out my other videos. But for this purpose, it's going to be the first time I show how to make closed wings, just kind of rested. And the most important part for that is going to be that we need pretty much three angles. The main angle where the flaps go, and then the other angle where it's kind of like the elbow and arm tucked in. It's better explained visually, I hope you're looking. Now I'm going to teach you grains a technique that I absolutely love loved when I first started and it's called a Skinner blend. But this method is a little easier to create a rainbow effect. It's called the carrot blending effect. And for that we're going to take our primary colors, make them into carrots and put them into opposite ways. And then you're going to flatten that piece, fold it upwards, flatten again, fold it upwards, flatten again, and it might take about anywhere between 11 and 20 times of doing the same process, but look what we're getting. And just to be clear, this is an advanced technique, so yeah, you'll need help from anything, but not these. And now it's time for horns. Of course you can put ears on your dragons. I personally don't put many ears on my dragon people because I like to leave more space for more horns. Because more horns is great. But this is where, again, your personality and your imagination can shine. And trust me when I say, the more detail you put into your piece, the more advanced it looks, including different colored horns. You can also put little scale looking things by making little circles and putting them randomly all over, adding extra spikes. And this again will depend on what you have around you. Have fun! Again, this is your imagination. Enjoy it. Even if things don't go as planned, just go with it. Before we go on to our next project, this dragon rainbow is super beginner friendly. Of course, I could have showed you how to make chibi dragons. There's quite a few tutorials for that. But I figured this was good in order to challenge yourselves. And hey, the only tools we really needed was the cutter, toothpick, and the back of a spoon. It's doable. Yes, there's fingerprints and all that stuff, but I didn't use any other tools. That's it. So get off my back! So let's go ahead and put it in the oven for about 25 minutes, but in order to do that, we need to pray to the baking gods. Dear baking gods of Evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, and fallen limbs. And also, stop breaking my stuff! And here is our super cute rainbow dragon. I have to admit, it is really adorable. Yes, I put teeth on there, but then you can remove it, but I, I, it was only a temporary teeth to see that if you wanted to, you could do that. And if you wanted to go ahead and paint the eyes, much like all the other creators do, definitely go ahead and do that. It is entirely up to you to customize it the way that you want. And now, time for a unicorn. When I was a little grain, I loved unicorns so much, to the point where I thought maybe I could transform into a unicorn. Don't ask questions. I was a very special child. I think I'm still special now. One of the reasons I grew up loving unicorns is because of this really old movie called The Last Unicorn, which is from 1982. It looked like a movie from the 70s. I'm surprised. And I highly encourage you to watch it unless you're a young person. It might give you nightmares if you're not ready for it, but it is, it's, it's it's a pretty movie. And again, same as we did for the dragons, there are so many amazing accounts that do make pony-like and unicorn-type creatures. Some of my favorite accounts are Sweet Friends, who makes some of the most adorable chibi horses ever, and Whisper Fillies, oh my god, who makes fantasy and geeky-type horses and filly, filly-type creatures. And again, there always will be similarities in every project because horse anatomy. Okay? Just want to be very clear. So again, all these amazing artists will be in the description box below. One of the color schemes that I absolutely love is that of Rainbow Dash. So yes, there, there's an overlap of, of rainbows today. I guess today's video is an homage to, to Mariah Elizabeth. I could go Creatures of Darkness! But we'll take it just a little easy today. We'll go with Mythical. And so I'm going to be mixing a light blue with white to get a paler blue. 
Lucky for us, the head shape for a unicorn or horse is really simple. It's also quite similar for some reason to a dragon. We're going to start with a rounded ball of clay and then you're going to take your finger between your thumb and your index and just constantly lightly pinch the tip. And you're going to be getting an elongated snout that looks like this. Once you have that shape and push on either side of the head one at a time. You don't want to smush. You don't want to smush the face too much. You just want to make the indent of where the eyes would go. And it's also at the same time the eyebrow type ridges. Is it eyebrows? You know what I mean. Once we have that shape, we are pretty set for the head. Now, similarly to the dragon, we're going to take our clay. This time I am taking solid black just because it's cute and usually horses eyes from far look like just black. <laughs> shape them in the same way that we did and make sure that they're the right size and we're going to bake it also for 10 minutes. The reason we bake it is just it makes it easier not to distort the shape. Smash the toothpick because we don't want a pointy tip. Now I know I am very aware. Don't come at me. Don't fight me. I'm aware that Rainbow Dash is an alicorn, not a unicorn. But I just said I'm getting inspired by the colors. Okay? That's it. I'm making a unicorn version of the colors. So keep that in mind. So as you can see, the method that I used to make the horn is just making two carrots and twirling them together. Let's put the horn aside. For the ears, we're simply making a little triangle, taking our toothpick and rolling it back and forth until we have an indent for the little earsies. Actually, you know what? I love donkeys, but this is a little too donkey, so let's make them shorter. <laughs> it goes to show that it's okay to correct if you don't like it. Better. After smoothing and bulking this side, you can see that it is definitely way cuter than this flat part. It gives it more dimension. Now we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to deepen this ridge here from the top of the eye to the nose. For the body, we're going to make about two thirds of what we did for the dragon. We had the neck, the body, and the tail. You need to calm your booty, bring it down, girl. My biggest advice is when you put the neck up, don't flatten this part down, otherwise you won't have enough of a belly. So try to put it in your hand and push it up. But for this, we're just doing the neck and the body, and you just kind of leave the round behind round. As the, the booty, you keep it round. For all four of the legs, thankfully, it's pretty much the same thing. You're going to make a log with your clay, stand it up, push the bottom part so it creates a bit of a hoof, H hooves, cluck, cluck, cluck. <laughs> and then just ever so lightly create a tiny bend just to kind of give an idea that it's not a stiff horse. This low-key looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> now clean her up. Now for the tail, the easiest way I found to make is to make a kind of carroty shape but on both ends. Lightly flatten it with your fingers, take your toothpick, make some lines, and voila! Different variations include twisting it, or turning it, or even rolling some of the ends. Actually, I realized these were too flat, so I'm starting these over. And I'm only going to lightly flatten them like so. Actually, I'm not a fan of this either. So it seems we have an issue of space. There's a little booty and there's too many colors. So unless I make them really thin and rounded, it just looks like a mess. So instead I'm going to do the rainbow colors, but divided with the hair and the tails, two different colors. Well, the, the, separate the colors in half. Remember, there's always advanced versions. These are beginner friendly. Remember that. Cue sculptures I've made. I'm 
I'm just saying, I need to show off just a little bit. And here is our rainbow unicorn, rainbow dash inspired. Now the most important part, we need to bake it. And then we'll be adding more details, but with paint. Dear baking gods of Evermore, please protect my piece from cracks, burns, burns. and fallen hair. And also, stop breaking my stuff! She is absolutely adorable. I love the rainbow hair. I love the theme of Rainbow Dash. That glittery horn is just spot on. I love it so much. And even though this is a beginner project, this just goes to show that even though I am doing a tutorial, it's totally okay to change things up if you don't like them. And now for two bonus mini tutorials. <laughs> And if ever you feel like this pony or this dragon are a little too advanced for you as a beginner, these methods that you're seeing right now are the simplest forms of these creatures, and it doesn't mean that they're not cute. As you saw, we started with a circle for the body. Take our toothpick, make indents at the bottom, shape the cute little tiny feet, and then add an oval head. From there, as always, it's going to be really cool to start adding the details that you want. And since they're tiny, you really don't need to do much detail. Just keep them absolutely adorable. For the dragon, we're going to take a small circle of clay, pinch two little horns or ears, whatever you want to call them, and slightly make the face a little pointy. It's very similar to how I make cute little kitty cats. The body is really simple. We're going to make a carrot, place the head right on top, and make two little hands on either side because it's going to be a cute little sleepy dragon. Similar to the bigger dragon, we're going to make the wings go downwards. So we don't really need feet because they're kind of going to be hidden anyways. And so here are all four of them done. Which one is your favorite? These are definitely beginner level, whether you're a beginner who likes to challenge yourself or a beginner who's a little more cautious. Both are totally okay. Have fun and be creative. If you want to see a crafting video, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch a salty review, make sure you check down here. This week's shout outs go to Truly No One, Louise Long, and Celeste Fredette. Remember, if you want a shout out, don't forget to hashtag notification squad in the comment section below within the first five hours of a video's release. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.